If she slows down too fast, I can lose it and that wheel on the bike can flip in either direction and I'm going down. Well, the ins inspiration for this entire project for the land speed record came from my coach, John Howard. Uh, he is a 1985 record holder at 152 miles an hour. Uh, so he wanted me to win a national championship, which was a lot of pressure, and I actually doubted myself. But again, he saw something in me that I didn't see. I went out there and I did it. I won not only in 2014, I also won in 2015. So I did back-to-back -back national championship wins. Um, which was phenomenal. Got out there in 2016 for the women's land speed record just to set a new standard for women, and we did 147.7 miles an hour. And that was behind a Range Rover with Shay Holbrook as my driver. We were so excited about getting that, and we knew we could go faster, and there was the last day of the event, and it had rained the night before, so it got canceled. And Shea Holbrook, myself, my coach, we were so frustrated because we knew we could go faster. And we knew that at least breaking my coach's record of 152 was in sight, let alone the current overall record of 166.9. So we just looked at each other, didn't discuss it, just said on Facebook Live, we said, we're coming back next year and we are gonna take the overall record. Well, we didn't think things through sponsorship-wise and what have you. It actually took us two more years to acquire another vehicle. And we came out, same team with Shea Holbrook and of course my coach, John Howard. And we not only set reset the women's record, not only beat John Howard's record, but we actually beat the overall record and we beat it by 17 miles an hour. I just wanted to beat it by three miles an hour we beat it by 17. So it was a phenomenal experience to be able to do that. And the culmination of everyone believing in each other and all being on the same page. So how the whole process work, works is it is a bicycle that has one gear on it. So I say it's like having a car with only overdrive. You can't drive out of the parking lot with overdrive. You have to get the car pulled to a point to where the engine can turn over overdrive. Same with my legs being the engine. That being a single gear is a very high gear, so I have to be towed to at least 110 miles an hour before I can release. And release only allows me to surf that pocket of air. I'm never out of that pocket of air during the record with the car, because that is my safety net. But what we do is we start out at zero. I'm towed to about a mile marker, one and a quarter at about 110 miles an hour. Once she adjusts that increase, she signifies me to go ahead and release. I release my tether and that allows me to stay in that pocket of air. She continues to increase her speed at roughly 20 miles per hour for each of the successive 3.34 or 3.75 miles. There was really not an absolute consistent power number or consistently increasing power number, but we were hitting anywhere from 200 to 700 watts in a back and forth. And so our final mile, which is what that record is, ended up being 183.9 miles an hour. We did actually reach 188 in that last mile, but the average was 183.9. The slowdown process actually is the most terrifying part of it because I don't have any control. I actually, once we hit mile marker five, she notifies me we are done with the record. Now we need to be able to slow down and get to the end and get off the course. And so our exit speed's around 185 miles an hour. So she ever so slightly slows down. I bump into the bump bar in the vehicle in that fairing area. And my bump bar is going in this direction on the bike. The bump bar on the vehicle is going in the opposite direction. So we hit and she can feel the hit. She can see it because she has two video cameras on me. So she knows that I'm essentially connected with her. She slows that car down from our exit speed of about 185 down to 110, at which point, and oh, excuse me, and that took a mile and a half to get down because she has to do it very controlled and slowly because there's only a point of about the size of a nickel that we are touching and she is my brakes. So I can be doing all sorts of things because we're not anchored with each other. We're touching each other. I wasn't able to put any input into the pedals to be able to correct. I wasn't able to go left and right in this sort of floating pocket of air. I can't go left and right because that could cause the steering, the steering to go haywire and I'm going down. I was done with that particular run and I remember 
being able to look down, because we were going slow enough, and my bicycle computer said we were about 138 miles an hour. And in 2016, I had exited, not intentionally, at 130. So I knew it's survivable, and I actually started praying that Shay would leave me, because it was so scary to be behind the vehicle with nothing to do but just hope my wheel doesn't move. And so it, when she gets down to about 110 miles an hour, she puts down the accelerator and, as I say, sort of births me out of that air pocket. And then I, the wind hits me all the same time and slows me down the rest of the way, allowing me to veer off the course. My son was in our SUV and he was on the safety road, so I get over to the safety road and I, I hold on to my son's, um, the passenger side of the window, and that's actually how I ended up hearing that I had done the record. He was the first one to tell me, because he was listening, to the announcer that announces the times at each of the, uh, the, the check-ins for the speed, so at mile marker one, two, three, and four. So he was listening and heard that I had had the record. Of course, I had no idea. I put my hand on the vehicle so for us to get back to the timing station. He goes, I think you did it, I think you did it, I know you did it. <laughs> and he thought it was like 186 miles an hour or something like that, but I was like, what? <laughs> I had no idea. And I thought, this is my 18-year-old son. He's pulling my leg. <laughs> so it wasn't, I didn't believe him until we got to the timing station. And I actually t saw the timing slip that we had done it. And so after that record, I was not in the same position as I was back in 2016, wanting to go out there for more. In 2016, at 147 miles an hour, it felt very much in control. And I was very happy to go for and push more. At 183.9 miles an hour, it was death defying. And at that point, I did not want to get out there anymore. Not only that, you get that little bit of fear that creeps in. And there was a very, there was a few close calls in that 183.9 mile an hour run. And I didn't want to test fate and go out there and do anything more. I was quite satisfied.